I've been sober now and clean for the best part of two years, but I, I remember my, my drinking started like I suppose most people's would. It's uh, experimental when I was about <coughs> 14, 15, something like that. But I'm, uh, so I left school at 16 and, uh, and I got a job, so I had money and uh, was in the pub sort of every night. And uh, even then, you know, I was drinking to, to get drunk because it, it sort of gave me the confidence and freed me up. And I had a, a lot of problems with uh, what they called then uh, manic depression. I began drinking at a very young age. Um, I was brought up in a family surrounded by alcohol. Um, I probably took my first drink when I was about 13. Um, I didn't realise I had a problem with alcohol until I was in my 20s. Um, my triggers for drinking alcohol were any kind of emotion, happiness, excitement, sadness, depression. I drank on all kinds of emotions. All my, uh, my qualifications and stuff suffered because yeah, I was drunk in my exam, you know, and uh, that's not the best way to take an exam. And uh, it kind of went without being noticed because I was with a, a group of friends <coughs> and we all experimented with drugs and we did drink a lot. But mine was always to excess and I was just sort of known as, as the guy that drank the most, took the most, did the most nuts things and uh, was really out of control. And during all that time, I, I met <coughs> my uh, wife. I got married. And uh, it was very, came very quickly obvious to her that I had a, a drink problem because <coughs> even if I wasn't out, I was drinking at home. And she kind of, you know, got to the point where, um, well, I, ju I just didn't treat her well. And uh, I was out, I'd disappear for weekends on end and uh, come back. So it was just like really out, out of order behavior. And uh, she got pregnant and um, the baby sort of came too soon and there was a big do at the hospital and they tried to get it breathing and all this. It's just horrible. And instead of dealing with that properly and sort of helping my wife deal with it, because I couldn't, I don't know, I couldn't um, process it. I just couldn't deal with it at all. And, uh, and I just went right off the deep end. Um, and that's when I started drinking uh, in the day. Throughout the drinking, I, I, I had many low points. Um, I have three children, which at the time of my drinking, I lost custody of to, to my husband. Um, and that's just one of probably the lowest point of, was losing my, my three children due, due to alcohol. I mean, I was at work and I used to put vodka in a, in a Lucozade bottle and I was talking to my boss and I put my hand in and pulled out the vodka bottle and drank it in front of him. You know, just things like that was starting to happen. So I, I was losing jobs, didn't care about that. Um, the marriage completely disintegrated. And uh, I mean, in the end, she was just scared of me. I mean, I wasn't ever physically violent or anything like that, but I was just, my behavior was just crazy. And uh, my friends drifted from me, and I just sort of grew the reputation of being basically a nutter. I had quite a few, few problems, physical problems. Um, but I, at the time, I was in denial. Uh, I knew my body was reacting. I lost a lot of weight. Um, I just, I, I was, I was in a really bad way. Um, I lost a lot of friends. I became a recluse. I drank at home for 
the last four years of my drinking. I just, I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to see anybody. I, I was suffering from depression, um, anxiety, panic attacks, and physical problems. I couldn't, I couldn't walk properly. I couldn't, I couldn't function. And that went on for a, a few years, and I never, I never dealt with the, the loss of the, 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 the kid, and uh, consequently never dealt with the marriage breaking up, and I literally crashed, and I ended up in a psychiatric hostel for, I don't know, quite a long time, quite a while I was in there. Um, eventually, I suppose they say a rock bottom. I had quite a few rock bottoms. I tried AA, it didn't work. I went to rehab for three months. I uh, came out, I stayed dry for six months, and I relapsed. Um, that was very hard. Uh, luckily, I didn't go back to where, I, where I, I was before, although I was back drinking for two years. I knew that I wanted help. I knew that I'd, I'd had enough drinking in my life. I'd had enough of it. I wasn't enjoying it. There was no, no fun or joy in drinking. It was something my body needed to have to function on a daily basis. Um, I'd wake up in the morning from not a proper sleep, a comatose type sleep. Um, I'd have to physically hold a drink down just so I could function, just so I could get up and do the normal things, wash, clean my teeth, tidy my flat, whatever I needed to, to do to see my kids. I had to have a drink to be able to do these basic everyday things. I met another uh, woman, um, she was great, she's like the, the love of my life really. And uh, <clears throat> we had a, a daughter, uh, I would just be getting, I would get insanely worried about the, uh, my daughter, which uh, constantly, and I, I was a nervous wreck all the time. Um, I reached another rock bottom. Um, I actually asked for help um, and planned, planned to have a home detox for the, fi the, the final time. I'd had four previous detox, but this one felt different. I, kn I knew that I wanted to get well. I knew that I wanted alcohol out of my life. Um, something triggered in my brain that that was it. You know, my it was time for me to turn my life around at the age of 37. I'd had enough. I wanted my kids back. Although I was seeing them regularly, I wanted to have my kids back in my life every day. I wanted to become a normal person, whatever normal is. By, by my early 30s, I'd literally become totally and utterly addicted to it and physically addicted to it as well. So I'd be like shaking and ill in the morning and having to drink before I could even function properly. And because I was like that, my partner stopped me seeing <coughs> um, my daughter and I couldn't deal with it. I could not handle it. it, it was, I was just devastated and all the, all the worry and, you know, the loss. And, you know, alcoholism wants you to be alone and it wants you to be... <coughs> depressed, you know, once you're in a darkened room hating everyone and everyone hating you, so you have to keep feeding yourself it, you know, I really believe that. And I made a conscious decision at that time, because I didn't have the guts to jump off of anything high, that I would, I would literally drink myself to death, so my drinking became massively angry. Eventually that happened, I'd, I, had, I had a home detox, it went amazing. I had a lot of help from, from the Isle of Wight DAT. Um, the detox went well and I've been sober ever since. That was uh, 17 months ago. Um, I've stayed sober 17 months now. now. I've got my kids back in my life. I'm back with my husband. I've basically turned my life around and, um, and I'm happy. And uh, at that time I got 
pancreatitis, which is an alcoholic's illness. And I thought, great, I know what I'm going to die of. It's not going to be long now. And I was told that any drink could kill me now. And I was just, yeah. I mean, I remember being in hospital because I was frequently in hospital once I got pancreatitis and the doctor saying, you know, one more drink could kill you. And I remember saying, look, take these out, my, take all the, uh, the the tubing and the needles out of my arms or I'll rip them out. And they did. And I just got out and went to the closest shop and bought vodka because I just wanted it to end. I was just desperately, desperately sad and desperately ill, but didn't care because of the pancreatitis and the pain of it would sort of force me to stop drinking. I decided that I'd use heroin as a painkiller so I could drink. So that's the kind of mess I got into with the, with the pancreatitis. And I woke up in the night when I was in hospital and for some reason, well, I couldn't work out what the feeling I was having was. <clears throat> And, uh, and I was sort of awake in the middle of the night, it was really quiet. And, uh, and I couldn't realize that I was, I was feeling like happy or joy. And, and it's because I hadn't felt that way for so many years, it was like, it took me a while to realize what it was. And it was, um, at that point I decided to stop drinking and stop taking, taking the drugs. I work in, <coughs> groups mentoring other addicts in their early stages of giving up and uh, you know a lot of people say it's very admirable and you do get a lot out of it but you know a lot of it is to do with keeping me clean at the same time and uh, you know today <coughs> today I'm sober and clean and sometimes it can be a day at a time, but my life is just infinitely better now than it was.